G'day watchers, welcome to Perth Watch, your horology channel broadcasting from right here in Perth, Western Australia. Today I have a piece uh, from a local friend and supporter of the channel, uh, Jeremy. Uh, it is a piece from Era Timepieces. Uh, now I think that Era has been around since uh, around mid to late 2018, but uh, honestly I probably can't be bothered uh, recounting much of the history because I have uh, some serious issues with the way they market uh, their products, um, but we'll go into that uh, you know, when I talk about the, the issues I have with the watch uh, in particular. Uh, so today's piece comes in uh, actually a fairly nice packaging, uh, you know, and you'll see uh, the box when I open this uh, as I show you uh, the product in more detail. So, you know, without further ado, let's just flip the camera around now and take a look at this guy. All right, guys, so here we have the package on the table here, you know, cardboard box on the outside. Spinability actually pretty good, four out of five at least. Uh, error symbol embossed on the top there. And let's just get this out of the package. So there is this kind of wax seal, which uh, I think is part of the uh, attempt to fool you into thinking uh, that this is uh, more than it truly is. But you know, you've got this piano black case here, which is Pretty cool, pretty cool, I gotta say. You know, nice box, a laser edge warranty card. You know, you can kind of feel that there is a bit of a work that's gone into that. See that, it's a, it's a see-through thing. So, you know, kind of cool. And I think they probably will try to honor uh, that warranty rather than ignore uh, requests. And then the manual, uh, not much to say about this, uh, except for the marketing uh, gimmicks in here. So I'll just uh, point out some of the stuff that you can kind of pop, uh, you know, pause and read for yourself, uh, you know, some of the stuff that uh, I feel are a little bit over the top and inappropriate. Uh, you know, this this brand means that no watch is beyond your grasp. No one can tell you where your place in life is. Nothing in life is impossible for you to get, you know, a little bit, uh, I, I'm just not sure about that, you know, let me know what you think, uh, particularly as you look at their website. A uh, little bit about the watch and then they go on about what a tourbillon is, but this isn't a tourbillon, so that's kind of interesting uh, little talk about that. They say it's a simulated tourbillon and then a little bit about the setting, technical data, I don't really need to know. Uh, about that. Um, yeah, one thing I will point out that the thickness is actually incorrect. Why would you quote a thickness that's actually bigger than what the watch is? Maybe you think thicker is better. Why would you think that? I don't know. All right, let's just put that aside and show you this box. Okay, so, um, you know, nice piano black, I gotta say. This is actually pretty good quality. Uh, inside here is pretty simple, just, you know, this uh, faux leather on the top here in the cushion. Okay, so that's what is in the box and let's just undo the buckle and show you the piece uh, in closer detail. So guys, this is none other than the Era Odyssey automatic uh, timepiece here. So, you know, uh, the, the, the piece is currently listed at 399 USD. That's what it's uh, listed at on their website. In my understanding, the actual Kickstarter price was actually quite a bit cheaper. It might have been two ninety nine. That's what uh, it seems to be reported as in historical posts that I found. So at two ninety nine, I reckon this is not bad at all. You know, I think for for what it's offering. Uh, but the the MSRP, the current price that you buy this on the website on order is three ninety nine. All right, as I usually do, guys. Let's first of all talk about the movement in here which interestingly is something that is relatively new. So this is uh, from uh, Shanghai, Jinghe. Uh, JHS 37 is the caliber. Uh, so, the, you know, it's one of those Chinese movement companies, but this one, I think it's actually not bad, you know, in terms of what it's offering. Uh, 21,600 uh, beat per hour. Uh, the stats otherwise down the left side, 24 jewels, uh, not a you know, not a very long reserve, but I guess a bit of a token power reserve. Uh, the complications are really where a lot of the, I, I guess, the standout of this movement is. It does have a quick set day and date. So, you know, you can see the, the date is at the 3 o'clock subdial, the, the day is at the 9 o'clock subdial, and those do actually change every 24-hour rotation. The month and the year are denoted at the 12 o'clock subdial with those window 
um, display for the year there that that doesn't uh, correct by itself that is actually manual setting as many of these movements might be and then of course you can see at the six o'clock position uh, on screen there is an open heart with a flywheel uh, display there okay that's really what you're getting in this movement uh, it doesn't hack but it does have a manual winding at the zero position here rated accuracy you can see there on the bottom left the actual performance is you know within that it's, it's running about plus 16 seconds per day um, when i have timed this in multiple different positions on the time grapher that's really the average result what is what i'm getting okay now that's the movement let's talk about the case here so the case is 42 millimeter diameter 316 cell steel uh, thickness uh, as i mentioned before the actual thickness is actually not what is reported on the website and documents it's 13.5 millimeter with calipers that i've mentioned uh, lug width is 20 millimeters and the lug to lug distance is 49 millimeters between my thumbs there so fairly substantial but not too big for a 42 millimeter case uh, overall weight is you know fairly light i would say for, uh, because it comes in this uh, uh, leather strap it's 94 grams uh, on the wrist which is you know fairly comfortable it's not too heavy by any means all right finishing wise so uh, as you probably have noticed as i've panned it around uh, there is no differential uh, finishing that has been attempted here this is completely 100% polished, uh, which some people wouldn't like. You know, I, I would have really preferred if they attempted some differential finishing, you know, brushing on some surfaces. Uh, I think that would, you know, at least show some craftsmanship, some attempt uh, to put some more work into this rather than the relatively easy uh, way out, you know, of just doing a fully polished case. Uh, what I will mention is that it does have step lugs, so there is a slight bit of crafting here. Uh, but otherwise, it's pretty slabby on the side, isn't it? That's that's really what uh, you're getting on this case here. Uh, the case back is secured by those four screws on the periphery that you can see there. And it's, of course, a display case back in that kind of gold tone movement. So not a bad looking movement by any means, this uh, Chinese movement, right? It's got that, uh, I guess, guilloshing finish there. All right, that's what you're getting here. And the crown is not uh, screwed down, not, not for a dress watch. I think that's uh, fine. Uh, so it's a push crown, but it, it, you know they've gone for a rating of 100 meters in terms of the water resistant rather than just a, a standard 30 meters that you might get with many Chinese uh, dress style watches. Okay, so that's the case. Let's talk about the dial now. So the dial here uh, has a white fine texture to it right this particular dial variation is white you can get it in different color variations check out the website uh, if you want to see it it does have a, a very subtle stepping uh, downwards into those sub dial uh, rings there uh, there's an applied element at the six o'clock position that kind of arches above that open heart there but otherwise uh, the details on this dial are 100 percent printed it's printed everywhere else there's no other applied element uh, that you can see here uh, the hands are polished you know and faceted uh, land style hands they, they call it dauphine but i don't think this is actually appropriately called dauphine this is actually more land style uh, blued subdial hands which are simple pointers right in all three subdials and in this case there is no loom whatsoever on this watch i don't mind that this is supposed to be a dress style and it's okay if it's got no loom for me on top of the dial is a flat crystal Right, you can appreciate it's flat, it's not domed, it's a sapphire crystal that you're getting on this watch here. All right, moving on to the strap then. So the strap here is a very simple looking black uh, stitched crop pattern leather, right, with a polished buckle, a custom buckle, I suppose they call it, with a, a era you know, kind of branding there. Hopefully that comes out on the camera, it's fairly subtle there. Uh, it does have quick release bars and Actually, this, this backing is pretty good quality. The strap is pretty good, I have to say, you know, overall in hand, this feels pretty good. Okay, so that's the entire watch, guys. Let's just try it on the wrist for a wrist shot for you guys now. And there you go, guys. This is the Era Odyssey, right? Remember, 42 millimeters and then 49 millimeter uh, lug to lug height on my 17 centimeter wrist, which is not, you know, I don't have a huge wrist, but 
uh, I think this watch is just okay. It is actually definitely on the big side for a dress style watch and no question it is chunky in thickness for a dress style watch. That's one of the weakness I'm gonna point out here. Right, so that's the entire description. What have I uh, you know, enjoyed about this watch? What do I think are the good things? Well, I think the movement is actually pretty good. You know, this Chinese movement, the tolerances seem pretty good. They have a fair, you know, very decent uh, accuracy rating. It certainly performs within that. Uh, and the functions, right, I, I didn't point this out, but you, you use uh, a tool to push these buttons, right, to adjust uh, the day and date and month and year. The functions actually feel pretty nice and you know as I as I turn the movement it actually feels pretty nice in terms of adjustment right and I'll just show you how the date uh, and day changes over okay as I approach midnight you will see that the day will change the date will change at the three o'clock okay so that's change and then you see the day now it's between Monday and Tuesday and then it clicks over to Tuesday. Okay, so the actual function actually feels pretty good, you know, in terms of how this movement feels in hand. Uh, the strap is pretty good. I've mentioned that the quality of the strap is actually pretty darn good, I have to say. And then the box, of course, uh, pointed out before, is pretty nice. You know, for two ninety nine, I think this is the best box I've probably seen in terms of piano black. Uh, but that probably is a negative overall for the watch because I'm commenting on uh, things that are otherwise. Uh, apart from the watch, I think the Kickstarter price at two ninety nine would have been quite compelling, but three ninety nine it's a little bit more questionable, right? From an unknown brand. What I don't like about this watch, well, look, it, it, I think it looks a bit unfinished. I think the applied elements are needed to kind of just lift this dial a bit. Really, it's missing those things. I think it needs more depth in the steps on the sub dial, or maybe applied rings might be an option. And then I think consideration for blued hands, right? They've gone for polished steel. Not sure if that was the best option. I think blued hands may stand out a bit better against this uh, white dial, right? In terms of contrast, sometimes in, in terms of reflection, those hands can kind of disappear into the dial. And then, as I mentioned before, way, way too slab-sided for what is purportedly a dress style watch, right? 13.5 millimeters, that is thicker than my Omega Seamasters. Is that acceptable? You know, is that acceptable to have such a slab? I think they could have tried to kind of, you know, hide that a bit with a bit of a uh, layering on the case side, a bit of the case back, maybe a bit of a standout on the, the side finishing here. They could have done that, but as it is, I think it looks like a slab really, honestly. And then apart from the watch itself, I think the marketing of the company is honestly a little bit of a joke. I mean, the, the standout, standout motto that you see first up when you visit their site is that they have certified millionaire watches. You know, it's certified by who, right? Why is it certified as a millionaire watch? Who knows, you know, that, that sounds like a bit of bull dust to me. They've managed to make a tourbillon for 1,500 USD entry price. Now that is honestly pretty good, right? Affordable, but they're not the first, right? I mean, you can get tourbillon with Chinese movement for under $1,000, about, about 500, I think the cheapest you can get. So I'm not sure why they feel that that's so groundbreaking. And then they, they talk about how they've simulated, they've, they've kind of designed this uh, tourbillon mechanism and simulated it. But honestly, they didn't design that. This is just a Chinese movement that they source. And this is also not the first flywheel uh, mechanism that you would have seen, right? There's plenty of those on the market. So I'm not sure who they're trying to fool with that type of claim to innovation. They do, didn't really come up with this. Um, and then, you know, the other bits of marketing, if you want to look at their homepage video, there's this show that they talk to a lady about their, their watches and they talk about how the 44 millimeter Prometheus Turbion is a unisex watch and they're telling her that that 44 millimeter watch looks good on her. I don't know what they're going on about, honestly. So guys, you know, uh, let me know what you think about their marketing. I, I think it's just a bit of nonsense, to be honest. All right, so guys, those are my thoughts on this era timepiece. Let's just flip the camera around now for the wrap up. 
So there you go guys, my review of the Era Odyssey, one of the lower end models uh, in their range, probably one of their more uh, basic models, but still uh, representative, I think, of uh, some of the philosophy of the company. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, and if you if you have any of the uh, you know other timepieces, I would love to hear your experiences. Particularly uh, if you have their Turbion, uh, please, which was kind of their their launch piece. Uh, you know, I think the watch itself, uh, it's got its issues. It's not uh, by any means uh, fantastic, uh, and I, I've detailed that already. But you know, more than that, I have some serious uh, uh, dislike of the way they market. You know, the the pretense. Uh, that the uh, you know, website is dripping with, to be honest. So uh, let me know what you think about that as well. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. New content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me. And as always, I'll catch you guys again next time.